The focus group was very impressed by our previous security videos. So we have decided to demo another tool. This is a demo of our Darknet security tool. USU has several tools for monitoring our network. Integrating information from multiple sources gives us a better understanding of our network. The Darknet sensor gives a unique perspective on USU's network. A Darknet sensor is simply a packet trap. It collects traffic to unused IP addresses. This TCP dump window is showing some of the traffic sent to USU's Darknet. If an IP address is unused, then there should be no traffic to the IP. But on today's IPv4 internet, every possible IP address is constantly bombarded with a variety of unsolicited traffic. It is like spam or neutrinos. It is everywhere. The nature and the amount of the unsolicited traffic can tell you a lot about your network, how it is used, how it is attacked. There are a variety of ways to create and use a darknet sensor. At the smallest scale, you can simply set a computer to listen to local unused IP addresses. USU tries to sample darknet traffic all across our network. First, we have a default route in our core router. It says, if you don't have a better place to deliver a USU destined packet, then send it to USU's darknet sensor. In addition to the default capture, we have created specific slash 32 routes all around our IP address space. This gives our darknet sensor a good sampling of our space. Initially, the main goal of USU's darknet sensor was to detect compromised USU computers. Frequently, a compromised computer will begin to search and attack the computers around it. We have found that our darknet sensor also helps us to understand how our computer, how our network functions, and how others attack USU. At USU, we monitor our darknet in two ways. We capture the traffic and analyze it using BASE. BASE isn't the best tool for this purpose, but it works and it's free. We run reports on the collected traffic, and this allows us to find known patterns of attack, compromise, and abuse. People who have lots of money use things like Splunk. Secondly, we also monitor the darknet traffic in real time using this scrolling TCP dump window. The hardware requirements are minimal. We are running our darknet sensor on equipment that we literally salvaged from the dumpster. The monitor needs two Ethernet interfaces, one for management and one for monitoring. The I.O. requirements are minimal. Our network has a 10 gig internet feed. It has a 10 gig backbone. But the darknet sensor would work just fine on an old 10 megabit interface. The TCP dump command isn't new, GUI, or even Web 2.0. It hasn't changed in years, but it's free, it's everywhere, and it's reliable. I like real-time monitors. This one is pretty low-tech, but it works. It tells me right now about important things that are happening in my network. Let's stop this for a minute and show you the underlying mechanics. Here's the current command. TCP dump listens to the monitor interface. It summarizes each packet on a single line. It ignores some type of local traffic then it pipes the output through an obscuring filter so you can't see my embarrassing dangly bits.
It is displaying live data. Let me point out some of the interesting bits. I can scroll the screen back and forth with my mouse wheel. The TCP 445 traffic is the Conficker worm. There are still lots of the Conficker worms scattered around the world. The TCP 389 traffic is an embarrassing local problem. Uh, it's an interesting problem, though. Laptops come to USU from all over. Some of them come from secret environments where secret people do secret things. These laptops are trying to call home and use their normal services. In the process, they are beaconing. They reveal information about the infrastructure of their secret place. They reveal their presence and their identity. And they expose themselves to attack. I contacted the managers of this secret place. After an initial bout of panic, weeping, and deep depression, they decided to do something about it. The problem is, if you have a standard laptop configuration, you always end up having a standard network fingerprint. Over the years, I've noticed that many laptops from government agencies and corporations have unique detectable network fingerprints. These packets to TCP 9100 are tragically broken. In the digital world, there is no love more true and enduring than the love of a Windows box for its printer. And even though the building where that printer resided was torn down eight years ago, still Windows seeks for the printer of its youth. I've tried explaining to the admins that they need to inspect the printer configuration and remove any unused printers, but I believe that what they actually hear is, Pewter bad! Hulk smash! The UDP packets of length 33 are BitTorrent. They're from various BitTorrent swarms, and they appear to be chaff. I believe that the intent of these packets is to obscure and throw off traffic analysis. The ping packets, uh, ICMP echo request of length 8, are from a botnet that is searching for the R admin protocol. They ping random IPs and when they get a response they test it for TCP 4899. This botnet is primarily distributed in Latin countries, Central and South America, and Italy. They've been doing this search for about six months. The traffic, uh, where'd you go? There you are. The traffic to UDP 5060 is both a scan and an attack against voice over IP. It is targeting the SIP protocol. These attacks are enduring and pervasive. Everybody who does voice over IP should protect UDP 5060. Darknet sensors are cheap. The war against hacking is at its base, and at its most important, an economic battle. Anybody who advises against a cheap, effective defense is either confused or has a vested interest in attack. Darknet sensors are easy, and they're very enlightening. Almost everybody who manages a network could benefit from one.